Okay, guys. So as you know, welcome, David. As you know, we're studying the topic of eternity. And uh, we life after death. This is how we started our series a few weeks, a few months ago. A few months ago when we st first started talking about life after death. We started with this, that there is a life after death. Now, because that was how they debated. You know, some people don't believe that, that you just die and that's it. Just like it, last night in the debate we heard, that's what his, his belief is, that this is the only life you have. You need to do your very best because that's it. You're done after this. Um, but uh, through the whole, you know, we went through our last series of there is a life after death, but we actually looked at the... The worst part of it is that there could be, and we believe there actually is, a hell. A hell after death. Um, let me see if that's my next slide. Yep, option number one. We believe that there is actually a hell. And if you guys remember anything about it, um, you guys remember how do you get to hell? Anybody know? How do you get there? Or why? who would go? What? How do you get to hell? I don't know if I phrased the question right, but if there's any response you'd have to that, how would you get there? Not being saved. Okay, clear enough. And there was there was something we talked about last time that was a little more sounded better than that. It was about those who won't let Jesus heal them, because we talked about that everybody has a disease called sin. And God won't let that into His new kingdom. So if you reject His, his uh, ability, His willingness to heal you, you too won't be allowed in. Alright, so that was option number one. And anybody remember what hell will be like? We talked a lot about it. What's hell going to be like? Anybody? Eternal punishment. Eternal punishment. Any other things? Is there going to be ice there, Eleanor? Are you sure? Oh, come on. No, you got to know. There can't be, man. It's too many references to fire. Okay, but maybe you don't know. Anybody else? Something about hell that scares you. What scares you about it? Kim? What scares you about hell? I think just the fact that being in a fiery place that is never going to end. Torture you feel every day? Torment. Oh, the torment. Amen. Yeah. It doesn't actually say torture. Or torment. Amen. Yeah. It's a little different. Steve, what do you what scares you about hell? Maybe uh, seeing your friends there and they're getting tortured. Tormented. Tormented. <laughs> yeah, because I mean that's what you think, right? You would think that the demons are torturing people there. But uh, biblically, that's not what it is. That's not how it's portrayed. And it's not angels torturing people like whipping you. You're tormented in this place to where there's burning, you know. And I, I don't know what it is, but the Bible, you know, the, we, we're going on everything we learned about. Will you? What scares you about hell? Everything. Yeah, well, fair enough. Fair enough. David, anything? Nothing scares you about hell? Dang. <laughs> Brave, so I ain't, I ain't scared. Anything pops out that we learned about? Mm. Nothing. All right, courage. Well, um, we learned a lot about it, and we're 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 done. That's probably I don't know if anyone's ever studied it that quite that in depth, and there's even more that we didn't touch on. There's so much more. Uh, we touched on a lot, but hell, you know, we, we just depicted as this place outside the city. It's always on fire. All the trash goes there. What it's going to be like, we're st we still don't know because no one's ever been there. And, um, but we, you know, we just know that God is absent. He's, he strips his presence, strips his hopes, his hope from it, and you're totally alone. And there's fire, it's dark. I, I don't understand, you know, the fire and darkness, how that works, I don't know. A lot of that's a metaphor. Like we said, everything the Bible says, it's probably way worse. 
than, than what it sounds like. But there's another alternative. Oh, oh, the curveball is going to throw at you, Kim. Uh, the bad news is that I was looking on the Church of God Seven Day website last night, wondering what they believed about hell. Any guesses to what their point of view is? No, they believe in hell. But any guess to what? Is it eternal, eternal torment? Is it annihilation or is it universalism? You go to hell and you die. What do you think? Okay, Josiah thinks go to hell and die. Any takers? Universalism. Universalism? Okay. What is universalism? When you go to hell. Steve? What, what did you say? Everyone goes to heaven. Everyone, is that right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody goes to heaven. <laughs> Universalism is that everybody, everybody eventually ends up in heaven. Rob Bell wrote a book about it. Love Wins. Kim, what do you think? <laughs> about what you About the, uh, what the Church of God believes. Now, I'm not saying it's wrong or anything. I'm just saying, I'm wondering. Because I, I didn't know. What the Church of God thinks about hell? Mm -hmm. Okay. Think of a guess. All right. Okay, well, I'll tell you. <laughs> I know. Uh, from what I read on the website, is they believe in annihilationism. That when you go to hell, you so, die, and that's it. No, so no, they don't believe it's eternal? They don't believe it's eternal torment. Yeah. <clears throat> so then what do they make? I'm just going to look over here. This is on video, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know. So, uh... I don't know, you know, I guess that's an area where maybe right now we disagree a little, which is okay. It's not like you're not a Christian if you disagree with that. That's, that's, a, that's an issue that Christians disagree with. It's not going to change whether you, you're, you're ter you know, heaven or not. Where, where do you find it? On the website. On whose website? Church of God, seven days. Chester. <laughs> yeah, the actual website. Huh. So, anyways, I just thought I'd throw that out there. That, uh, you know, when you, when, you're, when you do your own study, sometimes you might come up with different results. Um, we looked at all the verses. Every verse that talked about hell, we looked at them. Uh, so, you know, I'm curious to see how, where they got all that. I know that those are the two biggest ones. Annihilation and, and eternal damnation. And uh, like I said, if, there was a, if I had a choice... I would go for Annihilation. I mean, that one is just so much better to me uh, than having to be in hell forever, alive, in pain, tormented, alone, ugh, forever, a billion, 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 billion years. It's crazy. <laughs> annihilation sounds much more compassionate. So, I, I don't know. But as far as I know, what I'm reading, it's eternal. So, yeah, God knows, really, for sure. Anyways, that's not the point. That's not what I wanted. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, that was alternative one, life after death. There's a second option, okay? Option number two is heaven. What do you guys know about heaven? I need some thoughts, because we're going to study this hardcore. All right, there's streets of gold in heaven. <laughs> David, you got to give me something about heaven. What do you know about heaven? What's going to be like? All right, take a minute to think. We'll go to Julia. Julia, anything you know about heaven? What do you know about heaven? What's it going to be like? Beautiful. Okay, Elmer, what do you think? Think about it. Okay. Chibs? Oh, you said streets of gold. Marty, what do you think? It's going to be joy and peace and joy, peace. everything that's good in God's presence. Okay. Like nothing like it. Nothing is going to compare. Okay. You just take every answer. Kim? Heaven. Any description you'd like to... Um, well, there was this one book that we used to read when we were little kids, and... It showed, he not heaven, but um, like a picture of how 
there was like, animals and people like they were like they can go like put the lions in the wood and like attack them or anything so i feel right. like heaven it's kind of like that but yeah. more like in a perfect way right right but only you know people okay people so there's there. going to be animals in heaven oh i was going to be animals in heaven well but it I'm says gonna... oh i'm kidding yeah <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, David, any thoughts? What do you think you're going to look like in heaven? Do you think you're going to look like you? You don't know? What do you think? Carla, thoughts on heaven? What do you know about it? I don't know. Maybe it's just like an indescribable thing, like Always revelation. Describe. I know it is, but I mean, can we really understand what the streets of, like we can imagine it? But because it like it's descriptive in the Book of Revelations, but I think it goes beyond that. I think like the same way that hell is described, it's right? It's, it, like it's not all literal. Right. So I don't, and there's. Right. Like, but that's like closer that water that we can. It looks um, clear. Jasper. It's crystal. A whole bunch of <laughs> <laughs> So I, but I, like, I don't know. Like, even in the book of uh, Genesis, when he's describing those four rivers. Yeah. And he talks about how one of them, you know, like one's filled with right. onyx and the other one's filled with jasper. And you're like, what does that even look like? So, mm. and that was supposedly on Earth. Supposedly. Right. Eden. Right. So imagine <clears throat> that, like, if I can't imagine that in on Earth, then I can't even fathom something yeah. in heaven. Well, I think, uh, I think there's a lot of stuff we're going to learn that... We didn't know, but also some characteristics of heaven we think we know that are going to be very different. And actually, there's quite a bit that the Bible tells us. And you wouldn't think, you wouldn't, wouldn't know, but there's, God gave revelations to people. John in Revelations, you know, he gives them a vision of heaven. And then Daniel... Isaiah, other areas, Stephen as he was getting killed, they, they were given visions. For some reason, God gave them a glimpse, and they wrote it down for us. And uh, the point is that for some reason, God wants us to look forward to it. He really wants us to have hope in that. And that's kind of what we're going to go over today, is that... Hmm? Okay. Why should we look forward to heaven? You know, that why should we look forward to it? Should we be looking forward to it? And that's my goal today is that heaven, there's two reasons, is that heaven is not only our hope, but it's also our home forever. For some, hell is going to be home. For others, heaven is going to be home forever. You know, we're here, what, uh, 80 years? And there, a trillion, bazillion, uncountable, ever. My goodness. So, you know, hard to imagine, but why is it so important? Is because that's, that's our eternal home. And, and I would add to that that it's not just, like, the, the home itself, but God in union with God and yeah. His presence. Besides, like, all the other things, like, just being in His presence. Like, if we feel Him now in our sinful bodies, we get to experience, like, all of His goodness and just His presence alone. Like, can you imagine, like, actually, like, experiencing that for yourself, like, right there and then? Like, that alone. Yeah. I don't need nothing else, you know? That's true. Uh, somebody said, uh, I don't know if it was C.S. Lewis, somebody was saying, I, uh, no, it wasn't him. But it was, so, I'd rather be in hell with God than be in heaven without Him. And that was there, you know, because heaven without God is, you know, what is it? 
And that because if you're if you if you're going just for the the bliss and the enjoyment of it without him, you're missing the whole point. I don't think you can get there. Mm -hmm. If that's all your hope. Yeah. So I'm hoping that as you know, as we go through this, I believe that God is going to give us a picture. Uh, and there's so much that I think we're going to get out of this that should give us hope. Hope for the future. And it's not wrong for you to want to enjoy all the things God has for you. Um, but He's going to be there. That's going to be the big thing. And I think it's, it's an area for me that I, I need to be challenged in this. So I'm excited to do some studying on it because I know it's an area that I really need to grow in. Maybe I've got a little attached to this world and I, I'm forgetting about the one coming. So today we're going to just dive into some of that uh, today, but um, we're going to just start with today is that no, the topic for today is no fear in death. And we're going to read some scriptures uh, on that. But at first I want to give you a little story. Uh, this, is it this week? This week? Monday. I think it was this week. Maybe last. I went to a funeral this week. Um, our neighbor passed away. Uh, he was an older guy. Uh, he was in the military. And we went to his funeral. And uh, we were there. Um, you know, through the service. And every time you go to a funeral and you see somebody dead, it's just like, oh, it hits you. Like, oh man, what am I doing in my life? You know, am I ready for this? Because it could be me next. Um, so I had that, you know, I kind of thought about this. I was like, man, I'm going to be there someday. And how, how would I make the most of my life to get there? And at the same time, I felt a little afraid. Like, oh, man, I'm not ready. I haven't had kids. I haven't even gotten married. I'm still homeless. I haven't got, you know, I'm broke. I haven't enjoyed a new car yet, you know, haven't seen Fiji or Hawaii, you know, I'm not ready to go, uh, you know, so all this stuff, you get scared, and at the same time, you're like, ah, you know, death, it's scary, um, and I think that's something we all struggle with, is fear of death, nobody wants to die, I don't know anybody who's, I'm, yeah, kill me, I'm ready, I don't know anybody like that. We all, when we hear death, and when it pertains to us, ugh. I had some uh, health issues a year or two ago, and I was really worried. I thought, oh, man, am I going to die? You know, I started thinking about that. I got a little depressed for a while. I thought, man, maybe this is cancer or something. And, um, you, know, you know, you just, you get scared and worried. And I, can ima I can't imagine people who get that, um, get that from the doctors, like, you know what, you have cancer and you have two months to live. You know, ah, you know, what would you do? You'd be freaked. But there is, the reason why I want to touch on this today is because, you know, when, when we go to funerals and when we engage in that ourselves, when we're close to death, is that Jesus tells us or gave us the option not to be afraid of death. No fear in death. And I think that's like, that in itself is pretty awesome, is to not be afraid of death. And if you can just get that one thing out, uh, that would probably change your life. No fear in death. Um, and I want to read some scriptures with you today because I'm hoping that through this whole series that we go through, which is going to take a few weeks, that at least you get one thing out of it is that you will find hope. You have hope to where you don't, you're not afraid to go because you know where you're going. Um, so we're going to read some scriptures for the remainder of the time we got. And if you have a Bible, which I put one on almost every seat, if you can whip it out, we're going to go to Hebrews. We're going to start there in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. There it is. Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. So real quick, do you yeah. guys remember, do you, um, when Elmer first got here, I remember he was praying and he was like crying out and he was like, 
Jesus, just come now, come tonight. And I remember like praying and just like, no, don't come tonight. Like I still have stuff that I need to check off and do. And it got, I was actually sharing this in the last girls class I think that we had, like how oftentimes we, like when you hear those type of prayers, like it strikes fear in your heart for the things that you haven't done, but it's mostly related to like a human life mm-hmm. other than God, I haven't shared your gospel with so-and-so or God, I haven't like, you know, gone on a mission trip or done this or that. And oftentimes it's always related to a fear and a human experience or that experience that you haven't had more than a spiritual experience. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's anybody else has felt that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I've been thinking about that too. I mean, we're going to talk so much more about it, but heaven is going to be so much better than you can imagine than right here. You know, you think marriage is the biggest thing in your list. You know, when you get to heaven, you're going to forget all about it. But we're, you know, we're going to go into that, and it's going to be awesome. So I'm looking forward to it. So Hebrews 2, 14 to 15, we're going to ask our best reader in the class to read it, please. Elmer Hernandez, would you mind? <clears throat> Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise broke or took of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to life on the same way. Alright, anybody thoughts on this? Wanna read it again? Go ahead, Elmer, one more time. Since, for, since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear, who through fear of death, fear of death, were subject to lifelong slavery. All right. So uh, in the verse, what are people afraid of? Anybody? Yeah. Death. Through fear of death, lifelong slavery. Fear of death. That's how I feel sometimes when I think of death. Ugh. You know, that if somebody just held that over me, I'll kill you. Okay, I'll do whatever you say. You know, that's usually how it is. They come up to you with a gun, I'll kill you, I'll get hey, I'll take everything. Anything but death, please. In my version is a little different. It says, because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood. The Son also became flesh and blood. Alright, we're getting that so far? That because we're flesh and blood, God's Son became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could He die, and only by dying could He break the power of the devil who had the power of death. Alright, so the devil has the power of death. Only in this way could He set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. So only by Jesus dying could he set free everyone else who was afraid of dying, who had that fear of dying. Um, Let's see, I wrote some notes. So no longer do we need to have fear of what's beyond death. That's what Jesus, that's what the, in Hebrews they're trying to tell us. Jesus came like us, he died, and it, it, that's all it's saying. He's not talking about how he rose and all that, which is implied. You know, his resurrection. Only as you, could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of devil who had the power of death. And only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives to sl- as slaves to the fear of dying. So by Jesus dying for us, he set, he, it's what he says, he set us free. We don't need to be afraid to die anymore. And there's another verse that makes it even a little more clear. And if we can go there, it's in 1 Corinthians 15, 54 to 58. It makes it a little more clear of what, what he's saying. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 to 58. And we're going to have our second best reader read it. I don't know who that is yet. So we'll just let Carla read for now. She's got it. 54 to 58. 
When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast, immovable, and always abounding in the works of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. All right, so let's break it down. Carla, any thoughts? When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality. So when, I guess we're, like our, I feel like it's talking about, right, when our yeah. bodies are transformed, mm -hmm. so no longer of flesh and blood, um, right. so then shall come the pass, to pass the saying that is written, so then we won't be, I guess in a sense we'd be immortal, so death has yeah. no victory, <laughs> so it can't, like death can't touch us anymore, right. so the sting of death is sin and the power of, so the sting of death is sin. Yeah, let's break that one down, because that one's heavy. And the power can't of really sin is a law. You gotta break this one down. Alright, so, but... There's a sequence here that's quite important. I think the whole Bible's built on it. Is that, like Carla was saying, and you, go ahead, Carla, if you want to continue breaking it down. Verse 56. Which means sin cannot touch us anymore. But since sin is the law, law the law, we are not held to the law anymore. Yeah, okay, so for sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives sin its power. All right, so the reason why we're all going to die is because of sin, right? When, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, what was the consequence? Death. Death was the consequence. So, this, for the law gives sin its power. If there was no law, there would be no sin. But because there's a law, and when you break it, the consequence is death. But thank God He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the heavy one. Because if... And I, I think it just in simplest terms that when He died, all your sins are forgiven. Everything. And it, it, there's other verses where it says you're not, even, you're not held to the law any longer because it doesn't have power over you. You're not, it, you don't have any more power. Not that you don't need to obey it, but its consequences don't hold over you anymore. So, the law gives sin its power. So, what Jesus is saying is that, look, I conquered it. Sin, the law, I conquered death. You don't need to fear anymore. But thank God He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. So, we've got sin and we got victory. Which one's, you got one? They all look the same. Oh. So, that's the first part. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? One day, when you rise up from the grave, you're going to say it loud and proud. But why not even say it now? You know, why wait? You know, if you already, if you already believe Jesus rose from the dead, and you already believe that you're going to go to heaven, then when death is hung over you like this, you don't need to get all freaked out. Oh, no! Just saying, bring it, bro. You know, I mean, it's hard to do, no doubt. But if you know that your destiny is secure, you shouldn't be so afraid to know what's beyond. Uh, the other day we had the lake trip. And if you know Josh, Josh, big guy, he was so scared to get on the inner tube. He was freaked out because at one time he had, he had trauma from a little guy. He said he went on, somebody pulled him on it, and he, you know, he had a bad experience. And uh, so I went on it. I let him just beat me up on there, threw, it, threw me around. I said, hey, look, I'm fine. No problem. Get on. So then he did it. So, oh, yeah, it's awesome. And I just think about that to where Jesus is trying to tell us. He said, look. I beat it. I went. I conquered. I'm here. 
you don't need to be afraid anymore. So, you know, we're looking to Him as that He went before us, and He's given us the confidence, to see, telling us, look, you don't need to be afraid of this. I beat it, and I'm going to do it for you. No fear in death. And there's, um, <clears throat> so, with that, uh, no fear in death, but there's an there's a part of that that we're missing is there's no fear because we're so confident in our future. And that's the whole thing that we're going to begin studying on. But there's a few people that in the scriptures that I want to read about in Hebrews 11. This is a chapter of faith. And it talks about some people who lived like they knew there was something greater beyond this life. And it's pretty amazing to see how they lived. And I just want to go a few through a few of these verses in the time we have left. In Hebrews 11, we'll start with verse 10. And uh, we'll have the B and the C squads read for us a little bit. I'm just kidding. Um, you have a watch? You may have a watch. Keep me on time. 10.39. Okay, so we got about 10, 10 15 minutes. Alright, so Hebrews chapter 11, we're going to start at verse 10. This is the chapter of faith. Um, can you read it? Julia's going to read verse 10 all the way to 12. For he, waited for, the, for he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him, as good as dead, were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which by the seashore. So who's verse 10 talking about? Sarah. Mm -hmm. Abraham? Abraham. Next one's Sarah. It didn't actually say Abraham, so that's why I kind of threw it off. But Abraham, what does it say about Abraham? He was something. He was as good as dead. Well, that too. <laughs> In verse 10. He was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. Mm -hmm. So in the, I didn't go through the verses before, but it's in verse 8 it says, Abraham left his hometown and he went to follow God. He went on a journey following God. He didn't have a home. He lived in tents. And they all lived in tents, Isaac and Jacob. And it says, this is why, because Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. So he was looking forward. He endured all of that. No home, living in tents. I don't know if I could do that. You know, I just bought a property. Imagine me pitching a tent out there for the rest of my life. Oh, man, that'd be tough. But, it, but Abraham would do that. He would move, keep moving. And because, in Hebrews are telling us, because he was looking forward to a city, the eternal city, designed and built by God. All right? Doesn't, you don't really get that picture as clearly in the Old Testament, but he's telling us when he looked on his whole life, Hebrews, the writer, is telling us he had that hope, that he knew heaven was for him. He knew that that's where he was going. And then we read in 11 and 12 um, that Abraham, you know, by faith again, they, God said, you're going to have kids like the stars, the sand on the sea, the stars in the heavens. And he says he was as good as dead. He was old. He couldn't have kids. They're all dried up. His wife was like 90. But he did anyway. They did because God promised that to him. And they had a kid. And through him, all of us. So the promise came true. All right, God fulfilled His promise there. Now, we're going to keep going. This, this is where uh, it talks about all the people before. And I'll just tell you who it talked about before. It was talking about Enoch and Abel and Noah, how these people by faith trusted God. And then it talks about them in verse 13. Uh, Kim, you want to read 13 through 16 for us, please? These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them from afar, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Those who say such things declare plainly that they are looking for a homeland. 
And certainly, if they had been thinking of the country out of which they came, they might have had the opportun opportunity to return. Um, but they desired a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. Look at that. All right, all those people he's talking about. I have a question. Yes. It says exiled onto earth. Mm. What word does that say? Um, on verse 13. 13 does your my, my verse is a little different. They agreed that they were foreigners and nomads on the earth. Oh, no. Some versions say pilgrims. But exiled is like Kept, you did something bad here, right. so you're right. Yeah. So these good people there. of faith were cast out. I know that uh, in other areas of scripture, you know, like when the Jews were captured, they were exiles because they were they were taken from their home. You know, they were, they living, were forced out of there, and, and also living in a land that wasn't their own. Right. So. And I get that they're living in a land that's not their own. Yeah. No, but I hear what you're saying. You're like cast out. Right. Ca I don't know that it would mean cast out. We we have to look it up. We should look it up. Julia, you're the only one over there with the phone. Can you look it up? What does exile mean? I don't know what exile means. I just wonder what the Greek is here. Yeah. We'll have to look that up too. All right, we'll look that up. It's good. All right, but uh, in my version it says foreigners and nomads. So, like, people without a home. Foreigners. Aliens. You know, we know exactly what that is. Immigrants. You know, we're not in our home. Um, and obviously, he's saying, obviously people who say such things are looking forward to a country they can call their own. If they know they belong to earth, but they still consider themselves not of this world. They're like looking forward to something else. And this is the cool part. If they had longed for the country they came from, they could have gone back. All right? If they wanted to go back to wherever Abraham went, so I want to go home. They could have just went, but he didn't. He didn't have that. But they were looking for a better place, a heavenly homeland. And that's why God's not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Alright? So they were looking... For a better place, a heavenly homeland. All right, they had that hope. I know my future is in heaven. That's that's what you know. Abraham, that whole time, that's what he was, his he was looking forward to. And I didn't know that about him. William, what does it say? Uh, I got the Bible definition. Fine. It says the state for a period of forced absence from one country or home. Forced absence. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I want to look that, look that up. So that is why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Why do you think God says that? That's why God's not ashamed to be called their God. Why do you think that has anything to do with them looking forward to a future, you know, having hope in, in going to heaven with Him? That is why God is not ashamed to be called their God. Why would having faith in future with Him make God proud? That's what it sounds like. Any thoughts? I don't know. Wait, repeat your question again? Well, it says... That's why God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. Why does it God make why does it make God so excited or so proud to know that his people, Abraham and all these guys, were trusting that you know that he had something better prepared for them? Well, I I watched the show, um, but we've been watching about the story of Daniel. Mm -hmm. how they were taking from their own homeland right. to another place. Yeah. So I guess Babylon. Babylon. So I guess just still having that faith after everything they've gone through and still believing that they're only gonna be there temporary but God has a better plan for them. Right. And that's how he even like became one of the top people over there. Right. And he said he's going to Yeah. <laughs> I think it's faith. And I think as you read the whole the whole chapter you'll see that God is so pleased with faith. 
like exactly like you said, they're in a place that's not their home. But they trusted Him throughout the whole thing. They said, I know where I'm going to be. I know you have a better place. And God says, He's not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a city for them. He's prepared it. He's got a city for them. And uh, I want to read this last part. I don't know how much time we have left. 10.48. Okay, we got like five minutes. Um, and I'm going to prove, I'm just going to point you to the last part. So here's, you know, let me read a few verses and then you guys can finish it for How much more, verse 32, how much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned to strength. They became strong in battle and put whole armies to flight. Women received their loved ones back from the death. But others, all right, others were tortured, refusing to turn from God in order to be set free. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. Some were jeered at. Others' backs were cut open with whips. Others were chained in prison. Some died by stoning. Some were sawed in half. Others were killed with the sword. Some went about wearing skins of sheep and goats destitute and oppressed and mistreated. Alright, so that's, you got a whole array of people trusting God that went through the fires, they were tortured, they were cut in half. And they had one thing in common. They placed their hope in a better life after the resurrection. The one thing they had in common that kept them through. And uh, let's just read this last part. Um, Somebody has their Bible if they want to read it. Verse 38 all the way to... Yeah, just 38. Verse 38. Any takers? The world was not worthy of them. They wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. Well, you don't want you to read 39. Too, so. These all have obtained a good report through faith, but they did not receive the promise. All right. All right, so all these people... Okay, look, they went through... Orchard. They were whipped, cut in half. Ugh. I mean, that, you know, that we call that martyrdom, where they put a gun to your head and they say, do you, do you want to deny Jesus? Nope. You know, that's what happened to them. They, they died and they were tortured because of what they believed in. And you know what they believed in? They believed that I'm going to rise again. I believe that Jesus did, and I know I will. And I'm not going to give that up. I don't care how terrible my life on earth can get. I will not give that up. And I think that's the question that we've got to ask ourselves is that are you so so consumed with the world right now that you're willing to give up heaven for it? And there's ways you can give it up. I mean, you can choose to start dating somebody who maybe it's going to take you away from your faith and marry them and you know and just say forget god i got this hot chick or you know i got this hot guy <clears throat> this is heaven for me right now you know it's funny as i was looking up songs for heaven on youtube country songs uh all these other songs come up and they're all talking about heaven is laying next to a girl beautiful you know that this is heaven i ain't looking forward to nothing else you know or other things, I think, um, I can't remember the other guy's name, but maybe Drake has one in heaven, I don't know. But there's a couple of guys who have songs about heaven, and they're all about romance. And I think a lot of us, a lot of people, give up eternity with God for the romance now. Uh, and it, hey, it's tough, especially if you've been single a long time and you're not very good looking. Nah, or you know, if or if the girl is beautiful or the guy's so beautiful, you know, like that's heaven. Oh, I want it so bad. You know, we would give up. What would you give up? You know, what would you? What would make you want to take away or give up that hope in in the eternity? And uh, I think that's a big thing for us is that God. Or those people showed us what it's like to live a life of faith. And it could be really, really tough. 
There's no saying it's going to be easy. Some people were cut in half. I mean, I don't wish that on any of you guys. I don't wish that on myself. But what if I had to be living in a tent in my lot for the rest of my life? I've had, I was thinking about that this week. Man. But only thing would give me hope is that I knew that I'm, eternity is my real home. This is, this is not my home. This is just... This is just where I am right now. There's, you know, and I, I, you know, you may get, you, some of you guys in the future, you may get discouraged because you don't have a big mansion or you don't drive a Maserati or you're a little chunky or, you know, whatever. You know, you might hate your life and you want to, oh, I'm so broke. But God has given us a hope beyond anything is that, you know, you're going to rise from the dead. You don't need to be afraid of death. Nothing can take that. Eternity is your home, and I'm preparing it for you. And you, you better be ready. So there's nothing, nothing on earth worth giving that up for. And uh, that's, you know, that's what those people who went before us say. And in verse 12, it says, "There's a great cloud who went before us, who are cheering us on." It's awesome. Hey, come on, bro. We're all waiting. So, you know, something to look forward to. So over the next few weeks, that's what we're going to be studying. We're going to be studying about our heavenly home. And I hope you guys, at the end of it, are excited to go. You know, not that you want to die already, but, you know, just that you look forward to it. That it gives you hope for the future. Because it already is helping me out. I'm getting encouraged just studying on it. So that's all we have for today. Uh, you guys may know this song. It's called, it says, No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Pretty awesome song. So, you know, that's what we're singing about. I believe it. I, I believe I'm going. I'm going to be resurrected. So, hope that helps get us started. So let's, let's pray.